girlfriend exit the house and are taken into custody. But the house is empty. We have to do some follow field tasks on the final field and secondary location because our victim is caught in and has only one camera mode right now. The case just got more dangerous. Somewhere in this city of one and a half million people, Paco is being held. Every minute counts. Because kidnapping victims can be beaten, tortured, sometimes killed. Kidnapping are frequently tied to illicit trades like drugs or human smuggling. Those involved in these illegal activities are often the victims. Heist means cancer, and they have only one week to show them. In life-threatening situations like kidnapping, police are allowed additional leeway to search for evidence or question suspects. Gordo is arrested and kept at the scene in hopes he'll give up information about Paco. Gordo listens to talk. I got a victim over here because this guy had a weapon and was sticking a gun in his face and he can pick up using a kidnap in the driveway because he's lying. Right now we're not getting very good cooperation from the suspect here. The more time that you know we're wasting here, they're moving that individual to other locations. We don't know if Paco is alive or dead. For now, his rescue is the high school's only concern. Paco, like 37% of Phoenix residents, has roots tracing back to Mexico. And it's the connections to the drug trade there that many blame for the kidnapping here. A day's drive southeast to Ciudad Juan, the war on drugs really is war. Jose Luis Gonzalez photographed the crime scene for El Diario newspaper in Juarez, one of the deadliest places on the planet. It's 10 p.m. and halfway through his shift, the city has already seen seven murders. The explosion of violence in Juarez has earned this city the nickname Baghdad on the border. The conflict here is not about deep seated police. It's about money and the control of illicit commodities. Guns, people, drugs. Jose Luis bears witness to the bloodshed nightmare. In the cold, he comes. Here, that worry is a gateway to which billions of dollars of drugs travel on their way to the United States. It's the drug business that makes any deal between Barrio and Chief. Mexico is reeling from drug violence more deadly than the war in Afghanistan. Grenades crossed onto crowded city streets, mutilated corpses, blood city morgues. Gunmen battle police with military grade assault weapons. The violence in parts of Mexico is a show of power and intimidation by those in the illicit narcotics business, a business built on accessing the largest market on the planet. Beginning here at the border. By day, Arizona's San Rafael Valley is an unspoiled natural treasure. But each night, when the sun goes down, it becomes something very different. It's going to happen after dark. There's a spotter on some of these hills and watch him on Border Patrol on this side. And they've got telecommunication, and they'll tell them when to move. And there won't be a move. It'll be pitch black. You won't be able to see a hand in front of your face. Often.
Sir Charles Bowden has written about the border and the drug trade for decades. What you really have is a country with no money next to a country with a lot of money. One of the few things the country with no money, Mexico, has to sell is drugs. If they can move them to the United States, they go up anywhere from 400 to 1,000 percent in value. This is an unstoppable combination. It's unbelievable in fact. You can make gestures, and you can't shut it down. Narcotics from around the world move through Mexico. What crosses the Arizona border will likely stop over in Phoenix. Phoenix lies just north of one of the major trafficking routes into the United States. It's a focal point of the controlled by the Sinaloa cartel, the most powerful cartel in Mexico. Heroin and cocaine from South America and Mexican heroin, marijuana, and methamphetamine are funneled north across the border and into the United States. And with them comes violent crime and kidnapping. Ten hours into 